All right, lads, so it's finally time for us to update our monthly to this, this time for the month of April. Because in the month of March, we did get three new resurrectable characters and six new playable characters. The mid-month being dedicated to Aranka characters, and the banner to wrap up the end of the month being another thousand-year Blood Rule banner. While the characters themselves weren't like anything super exciting, in terms of at least character choice, the characters themselves were already good this month, and I think every character in their own unique way has their own play, their own niche in any part of the game. While I do think that you could probably afford to skip this month in terms of characters, none of them were must summons in my opinion. If you did pick any of them up, they're all good and definitely all usable characters, again, in their own unique ways. Of course, though, when it comes to ranking our characters, we have three main values, survivability, usability, and damage and range. If you excel in all three of these things, then of course you're more likely to be at the top of our list. With that said though, starting off the list as always, we have the heart to list, and in this month we receive one new resurrectable character, and also two new characters. Now on the topic of the new resurrectable character, in this case it was Machine Society Izuru, and as a character, he basically stayed the exact same, getting a very small damage increase. As always though, resurrections are more so just more free orbs, and sometimes really good links. In few occasions, more so when it comes to Thousand Year Battle Resurrections, and we are going to be getting Arskin, Bamba Yet, and Candice Resurrections in a couple days' time. They will be added to next month's tier list. But in the case for Izuru, the best thing he could have hoped for is to be a good link, and that he actually is. Originally being a 16% DR Soul Trait, now being that with the addition of Last Reiteration. Now, to most people, it's not that good. However, there is one heart character in this game that really could benefit from a link like that. That, of course, being you are. Now, keep in mind, this is a PvE tier list. We're not really talking about Brave Battles. But just because he resurrected, I do want to highlight that at least this sword trait is good for a character like you are, who more often than not is being put against someone like Yamamoto, who is guaranteed to lacerate. With this link and maybe a bonus ability, you can now make it so Yuha is immune to Lattery, which I think is really cool. Again, doesn't make the character any better, but it does make him a bit more usable in Bray battles, which is always nice to see. So as a Link, he got better, and he's a good one, but in terms of playable characters, he basically performs the exact same. Moving on to our two new characters, though. First up, we have Shaolong. Finally, after many, many years, he got a new character, his first five-star edition in this game, and he's a pretty solid character, all things considered. The only bad thing about him, per se, is he doesn't really have a dedicated part in this game. Since he does have the Squad Zero kill ability, ideally, you would like to use his character in the Rain Squad Zero guild quest, and he's not the best character for that, given that characters like Macy exist. Now, of course, he could be a premium option, a character that is more widely available than Macy, and maybe in the future, he might be a good lead in the Rain Squad Zero guild quest, but his gameplay doesn't really complement that all too well. He has good strong attacks, doesn't really provide the best crowd control, but he can inflict last rate, which can stop the enemies in guild quest in particular from actually using their strong attacks, and therefore giving you those few extra seconds of taking no damage. In terms of damage output, again, it's relatively high, all things considered. Frenzy plus one, with a 60% Berserker, he has a 20% strong attack damage buff that he can give to your entire team, and then his soul trait, most importantly, is 40% more strong attack damage when at full stamina. So essentially, for the most part, he has a 200% Berserker with Frenzy plus one, which is good because it also gets further increased with the 60% damage to lacerated enemies, and he does have an increased chance to inflict lacerated enemies. So in terms of strong attacks that he does have, in terms of damage output, again, it's quite inoffensive. Like, it's nothing super crazy, but it's nothing really bad. It's just that... There's not really a place to really use this character. You could take him in IT, Inheritance Charles, where he does have an increased chance, but then he's never going to have killer against any enemy, and he's going to be naturally slower compared to some other characters out there. You could take him into Guild Quest, but he's not going to be the best at that. Might be a decent lead if you lack other options. So he's just one of those few rare characters that release into the game and doesn't really do anything special, like a jack of all trades, but not so much. So in a way, it's kind of hard to rank him. He does like Havoc, and that does hurt his range a tad bit. I want to say like A tier for the most part. I don't think he's a bad character. He's just kind of there. Super forgettable. Like if there's one character to miss and not get this entire year, it's probably Shaolong, if that makes sense. In a way, your count doesn't get any better by pulling him, and in a way, it doesn't get any worse by not pulling him. Good character to have, though, potentially for a second month stage. If anything, he does give you orbs. If you are a Shaolong fan, he's not a bad character. He's definitely still fun to play if you enjoy his gameplay. The next character to talk about is, of course, Mania. Now, remember, Remember, this is not a brave battle tennis, and Mania is more so a brave battle centered character. We will update our brave battle tennis later this week, and that is where she would be more appropriate placed 
But as a character outside of Brave Battle, she really doesn't offer much, especially considering that most of her skills are Brave Battle centered. So outside of Brave Battle, she's definitely lacking on skills. Keep in mind though, Brave Battle character can still be really good in PvE content, more specifically Guild Quest content, because no attack damage characters like her can also be really good there. In her case, she has Flurry plus two. If she does get at low stamina, she gets an extra 60% damage output. But to be fair, in Guild Quest content, you're not really gonna ever get her to low stamina. She does have a debuff on her summon, which could be useful as a main. A character like Okura, for example, is a normal attack damage character that you can use as a main lead in Guild Quest content. However, he's a ranged character. Mania is a melee character. She also doesn't have guard breaks, so she's not really that good outside of Bray Battles. If you did pull up, you would strictly only use it in that game mode and probably nowhere else. You could, again, get a use out of her in the melee captain Guild Quest. But what we do know and we have been seeing is that there's way too much competition for her to really shine on her own two feet. Someone like Yuha, for example, has very similar damage output, but he comes with the benefit of having guard breaks, so he's more usable outside of Brave Battles and even Guild Quest, but he also is your team booster, so he's providing more value. Mania is not really doing much besides just Flight Plus 2, and there's plenty of other good characters that you could use in the melee Captain Guild Quest, like, for example, a character you got last month, Toshiro. I would say she's like A tier character for the most part, like around here, probably, with Chad, probably lower than Chad, because at least he has more value in Guild Quest content. Had you been given Guard Break, we could probably move her up a tier. Had you been given two killers, we might have been able to do more with her. But essentially, outside of Brave Battles, the only place you're really going to get a use out of her, unless you're forcing yourself to use her, really, is in Guild Quest the melee captain week where there's way too many options and unfortunately she's not going to excel too much but that's kind of fine because again she's a brave battle character and she excels in that game mode and when we do rank her on a brave battle tier list she will be more appropriately placed with that in mind, though, that's all we had to talk about on the heart tier list. Those are the two new characters, the one new resurrectable character. Although I do want to make a quite small addition. I feel like I ranked Momo a bit too high, so I kind of want to move it down. Probably, it, does she deserve S tier? I'm not too sure. I mainly ranked her high because she's a good epic raid character, but that's really all about it. I say A tier is more appropriate. She's kind of more in line with Xiao Long, in my opinion. So I would probably say A tier. I want to move Yachu up. I feel like maybe the bottom of S tier, I think, is more appropriate for her. Again, she's not like an amazing character or anything, but I feel like what she offers is really good. She has the built-in strong attack recharge between stages, a worse variation of Kilgay to a certain extent. is maybe a better way to describe her. She can heal her team. She gives everyone a 20% strong attack damage buff. She provides barriers. Whenever you can bring a ranged heart character into Limit Breaker, she has a place to shine. And I I kind of enjoy using her this month in this particular limit breaker quest she's not always going to be available to be used you know as opposed to kill okay, that's why he's sitting at the top of ss tier but i feel like she has a lot of go for her and her damage output isn't too bad friendly plus two 60 percent berserker honestly could be worse so maybe now i think for the time being i want to put her at the bottom of s tier and in a way i'm not gonna lie i do also want to move down kirio Again, it's, it's really hard to rank Kira as a character because on paper, she looks so good and she has her place in Guild Quest. But man, every time I use her, I there's there's been so many situations where like she's been optional as a character, but then there's always just better characters that in a way having her in your team kind of makes it worse. And we saw that twice this month in Limit Breaker Quest where she was designed to be used in slot number two and there were so many better characters than her and using her in a way would make your team worse as well. And then in Guild Quest, again, she has a place in that game mode. Her SA2 doesn't do any damage, unfortunately, because she's a ranged character with melee SA2. And the way the current GQ does work with Squad Zero and Human is that most of the good characters you are using there are not immune to freeze. And that means characters like her that can't give any stats immunity to your teammates aren't really that good. And that's why most people are opting to use someone like Mate Orihime over someone like Kirio. If you have access to the Ikaku, who again, stocks have gone up. Everyone's talking about Ikaku this week, right? Amazing character for Guild Quest. If you have him, then maybe she deserves to be a tad bit higher. I don't know. For now, I'd say just, I'm going to leave it at the top of S tier. But I wouldn't blame you for like wanting to put her a tad bit lower on the like near the bottom of S tier almost. So if anything, I think for now we're just going to keep her near the top of S. But like I said, she's a really weird character to rank given her weird gameplay. Moving on to the power tier list. Now last month's this video, we did say there was a 50-50 chance of us getting a new potential broken SS tier power character or technique character. In this case, the Limit Breaker character of the month was a technique character. And unfortunately for this month, even though we are desperately needing a new power character, we received no new power characters. So we're pretty much guaranteed this upcoming end of month banner for the month of April. 
which is most likely setting up to be another thousand year bundle banner we are guaranteed to get a new power character so i know many people have been desperately wanting that new power character to potentially top and carry the power attribute to a better position because right now the three sst characters while i do think they're all great in their own ways they also do have they're not perfect is the best way to describe them right they're not perfect Power needs a new character to the likes of Yachlu and Yuha. And that's potentially going to happen this upcoming end of month banner. So while it's unfortunate this month we didn't get a new power character, we are literally guaranteed to get a new power character next month. Having said that though, we did get a new resurrectable character. That of course being at Machine Society Toshiro. And again, gameplay wise, given that he's not Thousand Year Blood War, while he did pick up new skills, it really doesn't change how he actually plays. And in this case, we're going to just keep him in B tier. Maybe just put him above Ryuken. Other than that, though, not really much to change here. Power's quite settled in for the most part. They just need better new additions. Since we didn't get a power character this month, I'm kind of expecting two new power characters next month. At least to be released in the month of April. One being a mid-month character, one being an end-of-month character. Additionally, not only do they just need a new broken character to carry the attribute, they also now are the worst attribute when it comes to farming Link Star Potions. More so Super Link Star Potions. We spoke about that earlier last month. Their most recent character designed to farm Super Link Star Potions is Mashiro. And like, she's okay, but she's slow. She's a slow character. When it comes to farming Super Link Star Potions, you want someone like Senju Maru that can speed through IT inheritance trials under a minute. And give you lots of potions. Right now, Power doesn't have access to that. Sure, they have Nelio. And Nelio has been surprisingly useful. But as compared to the better Super Links of Farmers, they need a new one that can go through Iron Skin and can do a lot of damage. The only character in the power attribute that can go through Iron Skin, pierce it more so, is this particular Yumachika. But due to his low damage output and lack of range, he doesn't play that good. And that's why he's sitting at the top of A tier. Moving into our mind attribute, in this case, we got two new characters. The first one, of course, being Wonderwise. So finally, Wonderwise got a new character. And honestly, he's actually really good in my opinion. Last month, we spoke about a character like Toshiro being a good character, all things considered. But he kind of felt like a mid-month character, given that he's just a normal attack damage character designed for guild quests. And with that in mind, he didn't feel special enough to warrant being an end of month character. But in a way, this thing that made him special was that his damage output was significantly higher compared to any other character designed for guild quest. But that now just appears to be the norm in terms of power creep because Wonderwise, who came out two weeks later, a premium mid-month character is very comparable to an end-of-month thousand-year blood rule character. So I don't know if that goes to show how good Wonderwise as a character is or how bad Toshiro was as an end-of-month character. So Wonderwise, as already explained, is a guild quest character. You want to specifically use him in the melee no affiliation guild quests the melee no affiliation guild quest has been needing more additional support for the most part they have access to two good no attack damage characters but none of them are like really great in terms of damage output and one of them in key case case is not immune to the status element that you will see on that particular floor Wonderwise, for the most part, is just the perfect guild quest character for that particular guild quest phase, as he has a really high damage output with Flurry Plus 1, which gets increased to Flurry Plus 2 in guild quest. He has a 40% bruiser, an additional 20% normal attack damage, which you can give to your mind characters. His sword trait is 30% normal attack damage, and then he gets more killer effect, more melee damage in guild quest. So damage output is honestly really high here. And then he was also given follow-up and also guard breaks. So like he makes for quite the enjoyable no attack damage character despite his range not being the highest. But in terms of what he wants to do, yeah, he's a great character. Where exactly would I want to put him though? It really depends. I would say he's definitely an S tier character, all things considered, right? He's a NAS character designed for GQ. You can use him outside. His damage output's good. Doesn't provide the team with any buffs or anything in terms of, like a boost and barrier. So I would say like around here, funny enough, he's very comparable to Yamamoto given that they're both mind no affiliation killers. And in his case, one device would be the much better character here given that his damage output is just significantly higher. But yeah, fairly solid character character doesn't do anything super crazy but if you do want to tackle and beat the immediate no affiliation guild quest you need that extra support one device is a great character to have i don't have him personally but i definitely want to pick him up in the future even though i can already beat the guild quest because i know my team will get a lot faster my scores and clear times will be a lot better just by having one device in my team so really solid character knows exactly what he wants to be and it's honestly a really good character with that and then our second character is a thousand year blood war yumichika who would have thought we would get a new thousand year blood war yumichika and this character honestly is very surprising how good he actually is so in a way he is also a character designed for guild quest you'll see a very similar skill here where he gets more damage in the guild quest game mode but he's also a character that can be equally as fine outside of guild quest if you don't mind using his particular sa2 but in terms of damage output i mean he has frenzy plus two 
when you inflict the start element, and keep in mind he has an increased chance to do so, the start element he can inflict his drain, allow him to stay at full stamina. But when you do inflict the start element, you get to 80% stat boost to your spiritual pressure stat. That is great as is, but then when you take him into guild quest content, that frenzy plus two becomes frenzy plus three. It's the first of its kind for an SP based character. It's obviously a very powerful skill. And then he has other skills to back him up to. More cure effect, melee damage, which again gets further increased into guild quests. He was also given points as a skill, and that's really good for his gameplay. Because again, if you don't know, his SA2 in particular is the barrage attack. Now, barrage attacks are very iffy on whether like you like them or not. It's a very decisive strong attack. Some people like it, some people dislike it. I think it's relatively okay. It can do a lot of damage, but it does require you to stand still. Leave yourself open up for attacks just to deal those damage. In his case, though, it's honestly not bad because he does have the increased chance to inflict drain. And he was also given poise. So when you are using that SA2, if you get hit, that's not cancelling the attack. And even if you do get hit, you can potentially just heal yourself back up to full stamina while doing the barrage SA2. This SA2 attack is more so for guild quest and epic raid content where characters are more stationary. You're in a small room, so it's a lot easier to use. And he was also given weakened defense as well. So like when you do use your soul bomb, you're just able to do a lot of damage. In a way, the only bad thing about him outside of guild quest content is his soul trait. Squad zero killer right now is one of the worst killers to have. Very rarely do you go against any enemy that is a squad zero enemy besides maybe a rare Senkum on stage and again in the Guild Quest game mode. So again, he's another character that I kind of find hard to rank. In a way, you could probably say he's SS tier. Like, some people might even say he's better than Ichigo. I think Ichigo has more usability and that's why I'm going to rank him lower. But I would say maybe top of S tier is a lot fairer for him. Definitely, definitely could argue for SS tier. But I feel like his gameplay holds him back a tad bit. That SA2 is just very awkward to use. While you definitely can use him outside of Guild Quest, I think most people won't. So in a way, he's a character that just wants to really be only used in one game mode, if that kind of makes sense. And it's only one killer too. Maybe if I was given two killers, I would rank him up. But I think he's a fairly strong character. And again, if you want to argue his SS tier, I'm kind of for it. But I think for now, top of S tier, I think it's fine for him. One change I do want to make though, is I do want to move up Kirio. Forgot to move her up last month, but in her case, I kind of forgot this synergy that she can work with, and on top of that synergy, by the way, and the reason why this character is an S tier, we have someone like Shuhei. Now, Shuhei, for those that are unaware, buffs your strong attack damage by 20%, and also lets you do 40% more damage to enemies afflicted with a status element if you are a mind attribute, sorry, bar. And that's why Yuma Chick is also really good in Guild Quest, because you can pair him with someone like Academy Shuhei. So again, maybe because of Academy Shuhei, you might want to say he's SS tier, because at least in guild quest content he's able to get really really good scores at only special move level one out of five likewise though the same reason why i want to move up this kirio is because she did get a damage buff when she did resurrect i believe over two months ago originally i ranked her low because she didn't have guard break but at least in guild quest i mean she's immune to paralysis the status of she now wants to be immune to she has a team buff and then because the rain soap a week where you're going to use her you're using a character like seventh anniversary ichigo right and he's most likely going to inflict status limits. And with that, you probably want to use Shuhei. So because you're using Shuhei and also Ichigo, most likely in the Rain Serpent Guild Quest, throwing on Kirio means that she's buffing your team. She herself is doing more damage. And then because you have Shuhei on the team, you're also getting that 40% damage buff to enemies inflicted with status limits. So I do like the synergy that she has going for her. Do I think she deserves S tier? I mean, I feel like the guard break still holds her back a tad bit. Maybe at the top of A tier, I think is more fair. Pretty good resurrection, someone that I kind of overlooked. Good synergy with Ichigo and also Shuhei. Definitely a lot more usable now, at least when it comes to the range of Sorry, but Guild Quest. Moving on to our next tier list, we have the speed tier list. And in this case, no new character this month. And you know what? That is perfectly fine. I don't think anyone in this case is complaining. Mainly because speed, again, is absolutely stacked. They have everything they want in an attribute. They have the best farmers, the best Guild Quest characters really good limit breaker characters best supports speed is an amazing attribute and you can see that alone with the SS tier, right? They, these characters are all great, still great to this day. A lot of usability, a lot of value by having these top eight characters, likewise of S tier, just really good characters in this attribute. So in the month of March, they received no new character. And I don't expect Speed to get like a really good character anytime soon into the next Limit Breaker character, which might be a while away since last month we did get our, you know, Speed character. We're probably going to get other attributes first and foremost. I assume this upcoming end of month banner might bring us a new Speed character. But a character might be more similar to Yuma Chica, where it's not really like a super, super amazing character. Maybe someone just designed for a guild quest to cover a more restrictive week that needs more guild quest characters. And the attributes don't really matter. Yuma Chica, again, quickly go back up to him. His attribute really doesn't matter. He could have been power. He could have been speed. Doesn't really matter. He's there to be used in guild quest where you're going against all five attributes. 
And that's why I feel like we're going to see this upcoming end of month banner. Maybe for the speed attribute. Or maybe for a, just a next general speed character. I expect the speed character to release in the month of April, but I don't think they're going to be anything super crazy. Because again, the attribute itself has access to everything it actually wants. With that said, though, we did actually get one new resurrectable character, that being Machine Society Okura. And again, a, quite a decent resurrection, all things considered. It did actually give an increased chance to inflict Starsman, so I kind of like the idea of it. And he does more damage to his status afflicted enemies. Overall, okay resurrection, nothing super crazy, but we're going to move him up a tad bit to maybe around here, around top of B tier. Doesn't change him too much, but it was a quite good upgrade nonetheless. Moving into our final attribute, in this case, we have the Technique attribute, and for this month, we once more received two new characters. Very strange that this month, both mid-month and end-of-month shared the exact same attributes. In this case, the first character to talk about is going to be Halibel, the Unleashed version. Really happy to see Halibel get a new character, a great one at that too. Would have loved to see it in her base form. That's a character we are lacking in this game, unfortunately. But I don't mind Halle Bell's resurrected form. So I was perfectly fine with this particular character. Now this Halle Bell, we're going to put in SSD. So this might be a hot take. I don't know. But again, understand that she is a farming character designed to farm inheritance shells. And with that, she's the best in the attribute. And she's a really good character, despite being a mid-month. At this point in time... She's the first mid-month character that I'm putting in SSD. Maybe not everyone will share that same opinion, but I think most people will agree that she is the best farmer character for this attribute. For some reason, if you don't like her and you don't like her gameplay, she's a great value character because her soul trait is also plus five super links or potions. So you can turn any other character, any other super links or character into a plus 10 farmer. Like Gin, for example. Let's say you like Gin, I have at the top of S tier. What about using Halibut as a link? You're now making him a plus 10 super links or farmer. I wouldn't recommend doing that unless you're a massive Gin fan, because in my opinion, Halibut is a much better character in terms of speed farmer, because that's ideally what you want to see with farmers like this right inheritance shells is quite a difficult event you do have to farm quite a bit of super links or potions so the quicker you're in the quicker you're out the better and that's why characters that go through iron skin have a high damage output have good strong attacks are usually ranked at the top right and in a way she's very comparable to tensangetsu the only bad thing is she does have bad things about so keep that in mind and it mainly comes down to a killer effect a killer effect being squad zero killer is like the worst killer she could possibly have because in cop content you never go against squad zero and means any other killer, even Stamrza, would have been better in my opinion. But at least from my gameplay, it didn't stop him from being a fun character and she was clearing IT in like under a minute and 30 seconds, under a minute and 20 seconds, which is exactly what you want for a character like this, especially because again, she does get plus 10 super links or potions. Now, I haven't already spoke about it yet, but her strong attacks are actually really good. Her SA1, there was a bit of controversy because it is a ranged collision attack, but it's the first time we've seen this attack on a SP character like her. And honestly, I really liked it. Yes, it pushes back. Yes, it's not a mini collision, but it has a lot of range to it, a lot of whiff to it. And it did quite a bit of damage, especially because she has frenzy plus one, a 60% berserker, and 100% more damage to enemies not afflicted by an ailment. Basically, exactly what you want with a character like this designed for inheritance trials. With that, she can hit hidden enemies, she has guard break, and she also, most importantly, pierce iron skin. Technique was desperately wanting a new farmer. Halibel was exactly that. Wasn't expecting it to be a mid-month character, but I think as a farmer, she doesn't do anything bad. She's exactly what you wanted to be. She's exactly what I wanted in a super length of farmer, and I was very happy to have her. You could argue top of S tier, but I think as a farming character, as of right now, she's one of the best in the game, especially when you look at the value aspect, since she is giving you plus 10 super links or potions. So even if you don't think she's an SS tier character, I think most people will agree she's one of the more valuable characters in the game when it comes to farming super links or potions. Our next character, a character that we did talk about last month being excluded in a banner because we got Toshiro and Sangdu, we finally got a new Thousand Year Blood War Rangiku. And to everyone's surprise, she was the Limit Breaker character of the month. We were, again, expecting a new power or technique Limit Breaker character. And as of late, if you are a character designed for Limit Breaker content, more often than not, you are one of the best characters in the game. Because if you're great in Limit Breaker, you're most likely great everywhere else. That's just how it works. Unfortunately for Rangiku, she's not the character we essentially wanted in a Limit Breaker character. Ultimately, the drawback for this character comes down to a strong attack kit. It's not really the greatest. It has range collision attacks. Her SA1 in particular being one of the worst in the game. I've seen people say she's a modern day as a Shiro and I can kind of get behind that. Despite the somewhat mediocre strong attack kit that definitely does hinder her though. 
she does come with great skills. Like, if you just look at her on paper, she looks really, really impressive. Mainly because she has Frenzy plus two. When you inflict a Stasma, you get an 80% SP boost. At full stamina, she does 40% more strong attack damage, and that herself is the soul trait. She can heal your teammates every time you move into another map. Her Sobum has weakened defense. She has built-in long strides. And then she also has a team party buff, where if you are a technique attribute story bar, you do buff their damage by 40%. And of course, this does go for herself. So, on paper, like, you could easily say she's SS tier. But again, I don't want to keep putting every character in SS tier. I feel like right now, Toph S is better. Because, you know, as a limit breaker character, because again, that's what she's designed for, she was good this month. But then that's also mainly because this month's rules actually gave three damage buffs. As of late, they've been given two damage buffs. And I feel like this time around, they gave three, giving her technique damage times two, because even Caleb themselves realized that if she didn't have that extra DPS, she wouldn't be as good in the own game which she wants to be used in. And that's mainly because, again, the range collision attacks, right? I don't want to keep sticking on the range collision facts, but, you know, in Limit Breaker, you're going against enemies of poise, and range collision naturally just isn't good there. I don't think the range collision makes it as bad as people are making it out to be, but I think she's a very solid character. And we're going to actually find out tomorrow how good she actually is in guild quest content because we're going to be able to try out in the nightmare guild quest where she actually v pairs very well with someone like aizen for example right he is a ranged aruncular that is also a sorry but so she's actually buffing his damage by 40 percent so there's a really good synergy here i think she's a great character held back by her strong attacks not being that good but she has a lot of utility effects good damage output an overall good character to have but i don't feel like a must have right and that's why even though you know, she's an end-of-month character. Harley Bell's a mid-month character. That's why I'm putting Harley Bell above Rangiku because in the content Rangiku wants to be used in, she's good there. She's really good, but not like anything super crazy. She's not the best of the best. Harley Bell, though, as a farmer, she's the best of the best. In a way, in my opinion, there's no real replacement for Harley Bell. While there are obviously good farmers, they're just going to be clearing naturally slower. Rangiku's a great character, but nothing super important to have, if that makes sense. Just a nice addition in your books. And with that, that's the technique attribute. We haven't said that, though, I do want to actually move down Bambietta. Uh, again, she was uh, nominated and won the most overrated character of the year. I want I want to put it below Rangiku. I think Rangiku has a bit more usage here, especially because I put Yuma Trik in S tier. I feel like moving Bambi down is more appropriate here. Again, Bambi is more of a Gilchrist character. And she also is a character that is more usable outside of Gilchrist. You definitely can use her there. But she's a very awkward character given the high... Not even high risk, high reward, because she does do more damage at full stamina, and she has no way to keep herself at full stamina, and in a way that's always been her biggest problem. Especially with that SA2 where you're open for attacks. If you take a hit, all your damage is gone. So I think that massive risk factor for her does not warrant her to be an SS tier. That kind of makes sense. So I feel like moving her down is more appropriate. Still a great girl quest character. But Yuma Chica, in my opinion, as a barrage character, they're very similar. Similar strong attacks. Yuma Chica has better strong attacks. And he's more usable outside of girl quests. And if I put him in S tier, I feel like, yeah, Bambietta also does deserve near the top of S tier. Either way, though, lads, that was this month's tier list. As already mentioned, an overall very solid month in Brave Souls. Mid-month came through some really good characters, in my opinion. Haribo, again, being the farmer that I know I and many others wanted. A great addition to the Technique attribute, what the attribute was desperately needing. One Dwise is just another good non-attack damage character, kicking up the power creep for melee nad characters. And in a way, because of his damage output is so high, it makes someone like Toshiro, an end of month thousand year blood war character, look a bit more lackluster. The end of the month finished with thousand year blood war. I, again, think the banner... You could have skipped it, but it wasn't a bad banner to pull on. I myself did seven steps. I don't regret it because I did want the character themselves because I liked what they had to offer. Rangiku overall just looks like a very solid technique character with some great usability in guild quest content, potentially in future limit breaker quests. And then Yumachika was a great addition to the melee squad zero human guild quest, which desperately did need it because right now your only other good lead is this particular Toshiro. Who I think is overall a better character with more usability than Yumichika, just to specify. Uh, but at least when it comes to Guild Quest content, I do think Yumichika is a tad bit better. Although, in terms of clear time, Toshiro still can compete, especially when paired with someone like this Soifon and also this particular Juice Rogue. Given they both buff Toshiro's damage by quite a large margin. Either way, I think I've rambled on long enough. Again, as always, if you have any disagreements, if you think I ranked a character too high, if you think I ranked a character too low, let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care and peace.